Welcome to the World Championship of Online Poker 2015 main event. The $5,200 No Limit Hold'em, $10 million guaranteed. Biggest event in online tournament poker every year. And this year is no exception. The best players in the world played in this event and these nine were left standing. Always induce your chip leader as we start the final table and a household name, Joycio Alexander Kostritsin in second. It's been a fantastic WCOOP, $66 million in payouts over more than 70 events. And it all comes down to this, the final table of the biggest and most exciting tournament anywhere this year. 125,000, 250,000 blinds in hand number six as we start the action. And I can tell you that Joycio uh, the uh, very well known Alexander Kostritsin from Russia is the exception here at this final table because everybody else is making their biggest ever cash just for being here ninth place is good for $100,000 which gives you some idea of just how big this tournament is it's going to be a lot of fun thanks for joining me and uh, action already underway with uh, Binder Nut Nut terrific name from Canada has opened with Ace King, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. And KTA from the Czech Republic, who qualified via a $44 satellite. Imagine that. $44 and you're sitting here with $100,000 locked up. And another 1.6 and change to play for. Pretty sweet. He's three bet with the nines. And uh, Binder Nut Nut. Gets better, actually, that one with the decision but with ace king off suit probably a reasonably straightforward decision although do remember that these players are mostly playing for more money than they've ever played for before binding up probably swallowing hard and then pushing the all-in button he is going to get action it's going to be a flip it's going to be for his tournament life kta calling with the nines binding up not needing to improve he doesn't through the flop needs to catch an ace or a king or his main event final table will be brief one more chance to escape and instead kta knocks him out in style with the full house binder nut nut is your ninth place finisher stopping me saying binder nut nut anymore hundred thousand dollars for him we've got eight players left and confirmation of the monster payouts on hand in this one those money jumps are huge aren't they bigger money jumps than most tournaments have for first place and uh, 1.7 million for first whoever wins it will join this, the list of all-time biggest payouts from the WCOOP and Scoop, headed by Potter Poker, who memorably, memorably scooped nearly 2.3 million. Some of those do include deals. We'll see if we get a deal at this final table. You can understand if we do. Uh, the money jumps being so big. There's over half a million between second and first at this final table. Into the action, and Nolet versus Juiso in the blinds. A limped pot. Nolet, really interesting player. Some of you may know he won the Micro Millions main event this year. And we got an interesting flop as well. Nolet with the open-headed straight door. Joyso with top two. Yeah, Nolet beat out 55,500 entries in the main event of the Micro Millions. You might have been one of them. He took your chips, sort of. And now he's at the final table of the W Coop. Not much in between. I think he just like, likes to relax in between massive main events, which he dominates. <laughs> pretty pretty fun. He's going to check here, and Joyce is going to bet top two. Alexander Kostritsin, who's a sensational tournament play, won the Aussie Millions, and uh, has got several significant WCOOP and SCOOP scores, including a WCOOP win. Back in 2010, Nolet makes a pair on the turn. Joyce is still with the best hand, of course. It's a W Coop main event final table, but two pairs still beats one pair. That's the great thing about this game. It never changes, no matter how much money you're playing for. All of the changes are in your head, but how tough it must be to suddenly be playing for literally millions of dollars. Joyce will bet. 
600,000 into a 1.4 and change pot. And you'd expect Nolet to just call here. He's got top pair. He's got a straight draw as well. And that's the way it goes. 2.6 million in the middle as we head to the river. Which makes a straight. Straights for everyone. Not so good for Joyce, though, of course. He had this hand uh, had this hand won, but not anymore. Nolet has better than the board. Joyce will quickly call, not wanting to get bluffed off a split pot, but Nolet has the jack, which gives him the win. Up to 10 million now. Hand 40. We're playing the rarely seen 175,000, blind level. Not one I've played. I'm pretty confident you won't have done either, but that's what we're playing. Ravitch 85 opens things up. Really good tournament player, Ravitch 85. 1.9 million lifetime and uh, a lot of scores over 10k. Obviously, this is a huge one for him, but very solid tournament player. And our current chip leader, always in juice, is in the big blind. And he'll call here with a very playable king nine suited. And he'll catch something on the flop as well. Middle pair for always in juice. Now, the one thing you know he's not going to do here is lead out, unless he leads out very, very small, because, you know, what's what's inducing about that? What we don't know, of course, is if he induces with his clever and provocative chat in the chat box. Maybe he does. He does check. And he's induced Ravitch to do a continuation bet. That's enough of the induce jokes. Signed, everyone. Ravitch makes the bet. He does have a gut shot here, Ravitch. And, of course, the overcard and the uh, pre-flop raise momentum, which is a real thing. No clubs for anyone, so nine still good here. Always in juice, who has got a fair few nice caches, uh, but nothing like this. His lifetime best that we could find, $54,000 cash. So, as I said, ninth place here, which he's going to do better than, but ninth place was uh, bigger than that. He checks again on the turn. And Ravitch will shut this one down, thinking... Uh, not much mileage in betting and an ultra connected river card gives us all kinds of possibilities not least a club flush and do either of these players want to try and represent that we'll see always in juice will check his winning hand now does Ravitch think he can get away with something here he does Bets 2 million into 3.4. Very tough call this for always in juice. Because why couldn't Ravitch had a lone club? And he does make the call. Well, it looks sensational, doesn't it? To pick off that bluff. Maybe he figured that uh, Ravitch just didn't make too much sense. And it was too tempting a spot for him to make a move. Getting a price on the call as well. But always in juice uh, builds his stack. Things continuing to go his way. He's up over 32 million now. That is a big stack. You can write that down. It's kind of a golden rule. 32.5 million equals big stack. Very few situations where that's not going to be true. Maybe that uh, three hour long sit and go in Casino Royale. I think they started with more than that. <laughs> Sorry for bringing that up. What a terrible memory for anyone that likes poker. We've got a three way pot here with always in juice having a real hand on the button and two callers in the blinds. Conaldinho with the nut flush draw. And not too much help for anyone else. It'll check around. And immediate service for Conaldinho with the flush on the turn. His only problem here is getting paid, as you can see. Not too much for the other two players in the pot. Conaldinho playing out of Belgium. Previous best cash, $19,000, which in normal life is a really nice cash. The WQ main event, it's a long way down the list. 
He's already locked up 150,000 here. Ace on the river gives always induce top pair. And uh, might be enough to put some chips in the pot. We'll see. Colonel Dino has to get uh, get some money in here and try and get paid. 2.3 million in the middle right now. And he'll bet that much. Small bet, trying to get paid by some kind of one pair hand and hard for always induced to resist this in fact he's going to raise interesting raise on the river Caldino will be fist pumping hoping that his opponent has a smaller flush or broadway or something like that or some other big hand that he slow played Caldino Trying to make this look believable. Just another two million. He's only two million. You've got 30. What's the problem? Pop a couple of million in. Two mil balls. Always induced gets the message that he is beat. Conaldinho takes it down. 17 million for him. Hand 60 of the WQ main event final table. And should give a shout out to some significant caches in this tournament. Obviously, the best players in the world playing in this. Uh, Cash is for Noah Bokin exclusive. Stevie444, Stevie T Chidwick, and Team Pokestars Pro, Addy Agarwal. And the Bubble Boy, who we should give a shout out to, because what a bubble to uh, to hit. Bad luck to Wicked617. Significant caches for you. And a special well done to Dom Marty, who uh, went deep enough to score $25,000 the significant thing is he bought in for 12 FPPs, satelliting his way in for just 12 FPPs. Amazing stuff. Back to the action. This is hand 60. We're three ways for the money here. Bit Jess 79. Joins Joyso and always in juice and always in juice. Well, when it's going away, it's going away. A ton of chips and now top set. Joyso has a gut shot and will bet it. Unlikely to get a fold from Always in Juice, I'd suggest, on this one. Now, what do you do with top set here? Pretty connected board, pretty draw-heavy board. Do you raise straight away or do you just flat call? It is the flat call from Always in Juice, and we'll go to the turn. And four of clubs doesn't make too much difference to things. Joyso still doesn't really have a hand. Still needs a seven to have a hand. Pretty restricted by his stack here as well. Less than a pot size bet left for the Russian player. He will check. And always in juice will be licking his lips and looking at Joyce's stack and thinking, how do I get all of that over to my side of the table? Well, he's going to check. Which is interesting because it's such a draw heavy board. There's so many cards that would kind of kill his action. But not that one. Joyce decides to bluff the river. He's going to be successful a lot of the time. But when your screen name's always in juice, that's why he picked it. Joyso not heeding the warning written on the screen. Bad luck to him. That's how you get the chips and the titles in the first place, being prepared to bluff for your tournament life. But it goes wrong this time for the legendary Russian player, Alexander Kostritsin, who has to settle for eighth and $150,000. After this tournament, this highlight show, Always Induce is going to have to flip the script and never induce anything. But some classic inducing there on the turn with the check. We're down to seven players at the WQ main event final table. Beat just is uh, all in here with around about 10 big blinds. He's called by KTA. KTA has already knocked out a player, but uh, he's been in reverse gear since then. This flip is vital to both of them. KTA all in. Beat just nearly all in. KTA with the advantage on a nice flop for a pair of sevens. Desperate for them to hold through the turn and river. But it doesn't look like they're going to. 
Only a seven now can save him. Ace on the turn for Beatrice and then a king on the river makes no difference. Both players have a club. The jack of clubs in Beatrice's hand will play and KTA will hit the rail. The Czech Republic player wins $200,000. Say it slowly for it is magnificent. Seventh place and a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Great stuff for him. He won't feel that right now, but he will when he wakes up tomorrow and checks his bank balance. On we go, and we've got a bit of stack consolidation going on right now. The short stacks are having to get the money in. Mr. Kingball gets it in on the button, gets called by chip leader, always in juice, and an interesting flop, always in juice with top pair. Now top two pair, Mr. Kingball needing a spade to survive. Can he find it on the river? He cannot. And very quickly, we are five-handed in the main event. Mr. Kingball out in six, $273,000 for him leaving these five players. Now, they would discuss a deal at this point. No real surprise there, given the money jumps involved. Always in Juice has most of the chips in play, and he would be the obstacle to the deal, asking for a huge payout that if he won the final table, would actually give him more than the original money, 1.76 million, for the win. Uh, that's the way it worked out, because he does have so many chips. Anyway, the other players thought that was a bridge too far and would take their chances. So we play on with no deal for now. There may be one coming, though. Bear in mind that fifth place is $400,000 and first place is $1.76 million. So the difference, potentially on the turn of a card, is just enormous in this tournament. This is hand 100 with the players playing on five-handed. Conaldinho opens with pocket sixes on the button. And gets three bet by Ravitch from the small blind with that connected hand. Ten eight of hearts. Ravitch playing about uh, 27, 28 big blinds. Actually, a little bit more than that at the start of this hand. Canaldinho thinking about that, thinking about his opponent's stack size trying to decide the best thing to do. He decides to flat call, which I guess is tempting with a pocket pair. We'll see how he goes from here. Depends how aggressive Ravitch is going to be here, as he hasn't flopped too much. Very, very dry flop. Actually a pretty good flop for a pair of sixes. Just the one over card. And... Ravitch is sort of mandated to bet here, which he does. He'll be praying for a fold. He doesn't get one. Colonel Dino raises. Strange play. Not sure what value hands he'd do that with. And Ravitch sniffs it out immediately. Puts it straight back in his eye. Colonel Dino made the raise, almost a sort of exploratory raise, and Ravitch said, I don't think so. <laughs> I would not have thought so, my friend. And makes the re-raise. So, real uh, real ownership there from Ravitch on Conadinho. Just one of those flops where the raise wasn't believable at all. And Ravitch up to over 22 million. Conadinho back in action here in hand. 103. In the blinds. Always in juice sitting on that uh, 47 million chip stack. Not quite half the chips in play, but getting close. And he'll bet here. Cardinho will raise with top pair. Just writing the note, likes to raise the flop. Bear in mind, this is a highlight show, so we are seeing snippets of play. But that's a couple of uh, interesting flop raises that Cardinho's made. Interesting call by Always in Juice as well. Possibly the same phenomenon, just not believing the flop raise and thinking, I've got some backdoor draws here. I might make a hand, but if I don't, I might be able to win the pot later anyway, because how strong can he be? Canardino bets the turn. Now, is Always in Juice thinking about putting him to the test here? He doesn't have much. He's turned a gut shot. And that's about it. But he hasn't given up the pot yet. You do not get to 47 million chips just by giving up pots. And there's the raise. 
And this puts Conaldinho in... Well, it's a difficult spot, isn't it? Blind versus blind always induced could have anything here. Could have queen five. It was a limp pot. Canardinho will call the turn. And let's see if he gets tested on the river. Ace of diamonds on the river. Well, always induced is going to put him all in. It's premeditated, incredibly aggressive play. Conaldinho is not going anywhere, though, having turned trips. And he's going to scoop a massive pot. Well, always in juice, I think made a pretty good read that Conaldinho couldn't be that strong in that situation. Unfortunately for him, he held an ace and, uh, well, turned into a birthday prison on the river for Conaldinho. I think the ace robbed us of a more interesting hand. Would have been a tough call on that river with any other card for Conaldinho. We've moved on and Nola 20, the Micro Millions champ, looking to do a Micro Millions W Coop main event double. How unlikely would that be? Incredibly unlikely. These aces may well help though. He's been short stacked for a lot of this final table, but uh, recently doubled and now looking to build on that. We're playing 300,000, 600,000. So he starts this hand with just over 20 big blinds. And something of a cooler for Conaldinho. Although he hasn't three bet, interestingly. Surprisingly, I think you'd have to say. A lot of players would just three bet and be prepared to get it in against no let's stack here. Conaldinho's going a different direction. One of the facts he might be thinking about is the possibility of Ravit shoving here as a squeeze but that doesn't happen he flat calls so three players to the flop aces are the favorite and uh, they do always win in these situations that's what i've been told anyway <laughs> i may have been misinformed well fascinating flop something for everyone conaldinho has the over pair ravich has top pair little does he know he's finishing third very uh, unlikely but it is the case aces that belong to no let 20 have a bit of a steel grip on this one at the moment ravage the shortest stack in this pot he's got 8.2 the 3.9 in the middle so he's going to start by betting now if you're in no let spot do you raise here or flat call that's what he's trying to decide between He does go for the flat call. And now Conaldinho has a really weird spot. You see, there is no way to correctly play pocket jacks. I know you know this, but I just like to confirm it in case it's changed. It's been the same for years now. If you'd have got it in pre-flop, it would have been wrong. It's still wrong here. <laughs> but it's only wrong once you can see the whole cards. Impossible to play, aren't they? Apparently experts can do it. I've just never seen it done. Jack's still an overpair. Conaldinho won't know it, but actually a, a big card on the turn would have helped him out. Ravic still has top pair, but how confident can he be here? That confident. He's going to put his money in. He's going to hope that he's got the best hand. He does have top pair. He doesn't have a huge chip stack. And uh, he's going to put the money in. And no let 20 is thinking about this one, but you suspect just trying to get Conaldinho to come along. And does this allow Conaldinho to get away from things? Or does he see it as an opportunity to knock two players out? Does he think, well, one of them's got a 10, one of them's got a draw. They've both got sort of wider ranges than big hands. Now he gets the message. We go to the river, Nolet 20 in charge, and he'll lock it up with three of a kind on the river. Ravich 85 is going to be your fifth place finisher in the main event. $400,000 for him, and he leaves these four players still remaining. And there would be a deal, a big discussion with uh, Conaldinho, who'd wanted the deal right from the start of the final table, finally getting 
what he wanted. They would chop up the money. Now, it's the main event of the W Coupe, so they're still playing for an awful lot. $200,000 in cash and, of course, the prestige and status that comes with winning the W Coupe main event. But they have done a deal for the rest of the money. I'll confirm the amounts as the players are eliminated in the time-honoured fashion. Got to get back to the action, though, as Bit just shoves from the small blind. He's been unlucky here. He's run into a real hand. Conaldinho with the ace-queen. And Bit just 79 in danger of elimination. Interesting flop. He now wants his opponent to make a pair. Can he wriggle free of the noose? He cannot. So Conaldinho wins a significant pot. He's going to be your new chip leader. Bit just 79 from Belgium is knocked out by his fellow Belgian and he will take home $800,000 before the deal it was $560,000 so that chop has made him a lot of money hand 168 no let 20 has the button and a kind of a hand That's what pocket fives are kind of a hand you got to really want to see it. 1.6 million to go, he says. And Conaldinho, your chip leader, has an ace. It's three-handed. That's uh, enough for him to do that. Four million, he makes it. And the decision back on Nola 20. Flat calls on the button with pocket fives tough to know where it goes post flop isn't it if you don't hit a five every flop looks bad really i guess a big part of this hand is how aggressive do you think conaldini is going to be with his three bets it's not a bad flop for a pair of fives doesn't connect with anything broadway if conaldini had that kind of hand Pretty big continuation bet from Conaldinho. 4.8, it will cost no let. But he has to call once. We can see that he's right on this occasion. Playing results, which is uh, always easier. Now the question marks fall on Conaldinho. He's three bet here. He's continuation bet. The board's paired. And he has ace high. And it's a really, really big pot. 18 million in the middle. No, it was just a bit more than that left. And Conaldinho will keep the aggression going and fire away. Does Nolit believe him? He does. So that extra bit of uh, strength from Conaldinho pays off. Credit to him. He forced that one through and he extends his chip lead. Also leveraging the situation, of course. Nolit, second in chip, doesn't want to bust with always in juice still in the game. Speaking of always in juice... Aces. Always nice to see them, but, you know, certainly nice to see them three-handed at the W Coop main event. Well, he's induced trying to peg back the runaway chip leader, Conaldinho. And this may be the hand to do it with. Always oh, induced uh, is going to check. Do you know why he's checking? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? He's checking to induce. Yes. <laughs> 20 points for everyone. Conaldinho does bet his top pair. Always oh, in juice, induced. Check raises. And Conaldinho is not going to go anywhere, nor should he, with the uh, top pair. Blind versus blind, three handed. He's got a pretty strong hand, and that's a pretty sweet turn card for always oh, in juice. Very, very likely he has the best hand here. Just trying to get paid. He would love to uh, get a couple of bets called here on the turn and river and uh, get the full double up. He'll bet small-ish on the turn. Trying to make sure Colonel Dino doesn't go anywhere with kind of weak queens and stuff like that. Colonel Dino will raise. Well... Is this him overvaluing his hand again? Or is it, does he just have a read and always induce and thinks he's weak most of the time and he's just unlucky to run into the top of his range? I'll leave that to you to figure out. For now, always induce has a big hand here and is probably going to double up. 
and he does full house well full house is for everyone but always in juice with the aces was always in front and now he's in front in the chip count long time chip leader at this final table back to the head of affairs on we go and these two will battle once again in the blinds both with aces Cunardino will three bet Always in juice is thinking about this spot. No let on the sidelines will be, of course, hoping that always in juice busts Conaldinho in this hand. It's a four bet from the Polish player, always in juice. Conaldinho has the decision, decides the flat call, which I think is a bit surprising. You sort of thought possibly stack off or fold there. And uh, now puts himself in a tough situation, although Always in Juice will check this flop. Conaldinho makes a small bet. Similar betting pattern as before, although different pre-flop action, where Always in Juice checked the flop. Conaldinho made a small bet. Always in juice thinking about this. I don't think he's just thinking about this bet from Colonel Dean. He's thinking about how he proceeds in the rest of the hand as well. Has just ace high. And he will fold. So, fascinating hand, that one. It all worked out for Colonel Dino. Always in juice letting it go for a small bet on the flop. And no let, left disappointed that uh, one of them didn't bust. He's still the short stack, Nola, in hand 180. He'll open from the button. 400,000, 800,000 blinds, so about uh, 25 big blinds for Nola at the start of this hand. Ronaldinho will defend with the 7 3 suited. Why not? It's a magnificent hand. It's not as magnificent on that flop, to be fair. It's the anti-flop for 7-3 suited of diamonds, although there are a lot of anti-flops for 7-high. No, it has top pair here. Could just go ahead and continuation back. Could also check back. He does check back. A little bit of deception. Figures that his opponent probably doesn't have too much in this spot. As he didn't 3-bet. Canaldinho will take a stab on the turn. And no let 20 will figure I have the best hand. How much money can I make here? He will flat call. 7 million in the middle now. Important pot for no let 20, this. He's a short stack. He doesn't want to get any shorter. Nine of diamonds doesn't change too much. Conaldinho will keep the aggression going. You've got to give it to Conaldinho. When he decides to win a pot, he goes for it. It's not going to work this time, though. No, let's check on the flop. Makes him some extra money. And the stacks are pretty tight, aren't they? Very tight as we watch hand 183. With uh, just 7 million between all three of these players. Great contest, as you'd expect, for the main event crown. Always in juice will three bet with the kings, which seems reasonable to me. No let 20 on the button has the decision. A reasonably deep hit, so he does have options and decides to call. And we'll see a flop. Oh, and it's very similar, this, isn't it, to the hand where No let knocked out Ravich with aces against King 10. This time it's the Kings of Always in Juice to No let's King 10. And it's hard to get away from this in No let's shoes. We are three handed. We've got shallow-ish stacks and an aggressive opponent. What do you do with top pair here? It's certainly not going to fold at this point. Hard to fold at any point if it stays as top pair. Always in juice has the kings uh, and now has two pair with kings and twos. Now 
Now, we'll always induce once again live up to the screen name. He will. He doesn't disappoint. His army of loyal fans loving this classic bit of induction. Grammar problems there. Inducement. Thank you. Correction noted. And uh, it works again. When does it ever not work? I think we've all learned something today. Induce for the win. In fairness to Nola, he has a hand worth betting with tens and twos. Now, always induce has a choice here. He'll know he has the best hand by a million miles. He decides to flat call rather than the slightly funky looking check raise. And you've got to feel sorry for Nolet here. He does have a really strong hand, three-handed. The question is, does he think he can get value with his king-10 here? Does he think he can get called? And, you know, always induce can have a ton of different hands. He three-bet preflop, but he could have, you know, 9-8. He could have a pocket pair. He could have a lot of stuff that Nolet beats. And, yeah, Nolet goes for maximum value. Always induce is going to call. And always induce, well, <laughs> we're making jokes about it, but he does know how to induce action. He gets Nolet to put the money in. Unlucky for Nolet 20, pretty much a cooler. Not too much he can do, but what a fantastic effort. Third in the WCOOP main event for 1.2 million to add to his Micro Millions main event win. Really, really good stuff. We are heads up now at the final table of the WCOOP 2015 main event. Always in juice or Conaldinho will take home the crown. Always in juice as... Uh, Played some really good poker at this final table. He's been a long-time chip leader, hasn't he? There was a little dip there, three and four-handed, where he wasn't. But for most of this final table, he's looked like the winner. But Conaldino's looked really aggressive and definitely willing to, you know, back his judgment with chips. So don't rule him out. He's currently battling a kind of two-and-a-half-to-one chip disadvantage, but that can turn very, very quickly. Heads up. Remember, they've done a deal... Uh, four-handed but they're playing for two hundred thousand dollars cash and the main event title ace pairs the board here in hand one eight four both players with two pair now Conaldinho will bet and always induce is going to make the call so we've got 22 million in the middle Conaldinho with less than a pot size bet left Five of spades brings the back door flush. Don't think either player will worry too much about that. Conadino will bet. He's made some interesting bets at this final table. It'll be interesting to go back and analyse them. This one's sort of a little bit of a blockerish bet, isn't it? It has that feel about it. Blocker slash value. I don't want to face a big bet. I don't really want to get raised. But always induce. Uh, Gets the uh, gets the message that he's behind and folds, and that gives us a really different looking heads up match, almost even in chip stacks, as we watch hand two hundred and three, with the really beautiful looking pocket aces for Conaldinho on the button. Always induce makes second pair, which a lot of the time is going to be in front heads up, not this time. Aces for Conaldinho and a two million chip bet. Always induce. We'll make the check raise to 5 million. Now, we've seen throughout this final table he will make check raises with a wide variety of hands. Definitely makes him difficult to play against. Less difficult when you're holding the aces heads up. Conaldino will happily get the money in here. But always induce will not oblige. He folds and Conaldino extends his chip lead. 58 million plays just under 42 million. We'll jump on a couple of hands. Not much has changed. We're playing 500,000, 1 million blind. So a little bit of depth to these chip stacks. Always in juice with the shorter stack. Still has uh, 38, 39 big blinds. Enough to three bet here with the ace three. Conaldino quickly calls. And we'll see a flop in this three bet pot. And Conaldino will win the flopping contest. Always nice to win the flopping contest. He makes top pair. Always in juice has a gut shot. And he's also the three better, so he will continue for four million. Conan Dino will raise. And he raises the flop so much that 
always in juice, won't necessarily think he's got a big hand here. And decides to call. Oh, this pot is now huge. 29 million in it, more than in always in juice's stack. And nine of clubs on the turn. Well, Conaldinho has the queen of clubs. Still, of course, has top pair. Doesn't have much to fear here. He decides to check it back. And nine of hearts on the river. So always in juice with just ace high. We'll be hoping that Conaldinho was just bluff raising the flop or has a hand like six, seven or something like that. But he'll get the bad news. And in fact, Conaldinho has a much stronger hand than that. Didn't value back the river there. Must have thought about it. But he'll take a three to one chip lead into hand 208. Always in juice. Came into this heads up match as chip leader, but everything's been against him so far. Can he turn this round? Again, both players flop pairs. Conaldinho flops top pair, which is uh, something close to a monster heads up. Always in juice with second pair, and he'll bet two million. Conaldinho will raise. And how does Always in Juice read that? Conaldinho raises a lot of flops and Always in Juice not minded to give up second pair right now. More than his chip stack is in the middle and he hits two pair on the turn. Well, what a card that could be for Always in Juice's efforts to get back into this matchup. Conaldinho will basically set him all in. Always in Juice has an easy call. Now, Conaldinho can hit a 10 but apart from that always in juice will be doubling up here with his two pair and we'll be playing again oh it's 10 10 on the river for conaldinho seven out of nowhere he ends the match always in juice will be devastated by that river card conaldinho seven well he played aggressively and made it happen for himself. And he is your WQ 2015 main event champion. Conaldinho 7 wins $1.3 million. A huge take out of this main event. He's waded through the best field in online poker and beat them all. Always in juice. Wins a million in second. And no lit 20. The third seven-figure payout after the four-way deal at this main event final table. It's been a real, real privilege to bring you this final table and all of the best of the WCOOP action. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you again next year. For everyone at PokerStars.tv, I'm Nick Welthall. Take big care.